as a system admin system admin job is to just manage whatever the system is already implemented the system is already in build you just gonna administer the system that's called a system admin so if you work for a company as a system admin maybe you don't need to configure a server you don't need to maybe you know you know configure they already have a server they already have a vm environment they, they will already have a, some other tools you just need to know how to use it that's the administration administrator so you have to maybe create a user delete user provide the permission rename the user maybe maybe assign the password or all those things you need to do that's your administration but the class we're going to do today if you know those things you will be engineer so you can claim yourself as a system engineer so to be a system engineer what you need to do or what you need to know right so the first thing is our whole life gonna be we our whole life we will spend with the server because we, we don't gonna deal with any laptop or desktop computer we're gonna deal with server so server means it has like huge capacity like the configuration is high rather than your laptop or desktop right that's what we already know right based on based on our first second class so if you think this is a server so it can be dell it can be hp actually hpe dell don't, don't say just only dell dell emc do do your practice like this dell emc hpe because dell sell only the end user level product where which documents my documents is when because in short dell means we know what is dell okay but dell emc inside dell emc they have two branch dell deal with all the end user devices and dell emc deal with all the server stuff so that's why i said like do practice from now dell emc that means if you talk about the server that means dell, dell emc sell all the server stuff and hp and hpe hp sell only the end user level devices which is printer laptop desktop or other network equipment or uh, like computer equipment but hpe is sell all the servers servers uh, storage and cisco 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 sell network yeah, so Cisco sell all the network equipment, right? But Cisco servers, Cisco servers, they call it UCS. Cisco UCS. And also there's the Lenovo and some other systems by IBM, but those are not used by anymore like with any company. Maybe some few companies using IBM or maybe, maybe, maybe Lenovo. But in enterprise level, most of the company use Nowadays, Dell EMC, HPE, or Cisco, UCS, this three product. Most of the company they're using. And it's not mean that one company just only use Dell EMC. One another company just only using Cisco. It's a mixed environment, maximum places. But maybe maximum places, they use Dell EMC with Cisco UCS, or maybe HPE with Cisco UCS. But Cisco is there. Why Cisco is there? Because Cisco has some specific product they sell, like for example, voice transmission, right? So like the voice call, um, IP telephone. So all kind of voice stuff, they control by Cisco. That's why uh, each and every company they're involved with the Cisco. So we're gonna learn here practically Dell. And also, I'll give you an idea about the HP. Both are like almost similar, almost similar. The hardware level is almost similar, but two different companies. Just think about this is a server.
So Dell EMC, so Dell power that their model, like the server model, they call is PowerEdge, right? So Dell PowerEdge server, Dell PowerEdge or 730, whatever the model is, 96 gig of memory. Anyway, so, so this is the backside of the server. So the server look like, like this. The server gonna be look like this. So this is one U server. And like uh, the previous server I saw here, this is look like two U server. This is two U server. Two U means it's gonna take two U space, unit space on the rack. That's why it's called two U server. So this is the server system. You see this guy is changing the memory. This is the socket. So anyway, so think about this is a server. So whenever you buy a server the first time, right? You don't know what you need to do, right? So from where are you gonna start? First, you need to have all kinds of cable, right? You have to you have to connect all the cables. So each and every server has a dual power. Dual power means two power cable. And inside it has a, <clears throat> like two, two power supply in each server, two power supply mi minimum, right? If it is a four, four U server, then maybe you can have four uh, power supply with four power cable, right? It depends. In like in average, if it is one U or two U, you're gonna get only two um, two power supply with two power cable. All the time, we have to think about the redundancy. So redundant means one is goes down for some reason. One can be unplugged or maybe loose connection. It can be happen anytime, right? For example, in a in a data center, there will be a lot of servers, a lot of cables. So someone is maybe working on server number three and you server number is one, right? So whenever he's working on his server, he just unplugs some cables and maybe somehow one of your server cable is unplugged or maybe loose connection. So if you have only one connection, that means your server will be shut down, right? So that's why all the time, um, all the time is connected with two power cable. And also in the rack, in the inside of the data center, there will be a rack, there will be a rack. So there will be a rack here. And the server is gonna be si sitting like this on the rack. So, and also each and every rack has a lot of power, like power stripe here, like power connections. So left side and right side, right? So on the left side, they will have, a. so you have two power, for example, um, for example, this is a this is the, this is your server, yeah, and you have a two power unit here, two power unit. So how are you gonna connect? And on the rack, there is all like you have a say for example you have a power outlet here. You have, all these are power outlet. All these are power outlet. Think about this. All are power outlet on the rack. On the rack, all these are power outlet. So now. I have a question. So this is your power supply, right? And you have two cable. How are you gonna connect it? So definitely one you wanna connect here, right? Right? One connection even you wanna connect here like this. Uh, like this, right? So why other side? So there is not only a one redundancy from your side. There is a so redundancy should be everywhere. You are ensuring redundancy because you have two power connection from your side and you connect to two different outlets. And also whoever is working for data center facility, there will be a team that called data center facility team. So facility team will provide you the power connections. They have somewhere same kind of two redundancy system. The power connection, main power connection comes from two different source. So one source, come from this one, another source is coming from this way. So they also providing you redundancy. So if one is, if their one power system is goes down, that means whole thing will be down, right? It's not just only your server. 
Maybe there will be some other people server, right? So you one connection will be down because of not your fault. It's because of maybe the main power grid issues or maybe the data center facility power issues, right? So this one will be available. So there is a multiple ways you can ensure the redundancy. So not only we're gonna consider only the power cable redundancy, also for the network side, we all the time, our target will be make sure we have redundancy all the time. So as a system engineer or system engineer, you have to keep it in your mind all the time, you have to provide redundancy. So today we're gonna to connect power cable and then this server, if I want to manage a physical server, what I have to do? Every time I have to go to the data center. And you, do, you, you don't know like how much sound inside the data center. And also it's a cold all the time. So you cannot stay a long time inside the data center. If you work as a system engineer, that means you have to deal with the server, right? It, it not means that all the time you have to go to the data center. And also it not means that all the time you have to stay inside of the data center. But somehow you have to be involved with the data center. So as an engineer, you don't need to work that much on the data center. So you just need to go one time, just hook up all the cables. And one thing you just need to do the first time, one thing only, which is your remote management configuration, which we're gonna do today. After you're done with the remote configuration, then you are done remotely any place from anywhere from your office or at home you can configure your server so to configure the server what do you need first you need to put the server in the rack that's for sure right it's called rack and stack so if you want to take any server inside the data center first you have to inform the data center facility team hey i'm going to um add more server in, in our like uh, on, in our rack or on the facility. So I need to confirm there is available network, uh, there, there is available power connections. So, and also do you guys have any kind of uh, procedure or, or form I need to fill up? So definitely when you um, add any server on the rack or data center, they need to have some uh, serial number. They put a sticker because they need to count all the devices. They don't know what you are doing, what's your server name, they don't need to know. But just they need to know, okay, there is a server and managed by this team, XYZ team, right? So they need to have that kind of countability. So you need to provide them information. I'm going to add one more server. Then maybe and you, have, you have to fill up some form. Like I'm going to add my server on rack number this, uh, unit number this, and my serial number is this, my server is Dell, you know, power edge, this model. So you have to provide some information to the data center facility team. And then they're gonna come, they don't need, they don't need to tell you when they're gonna come, but after you do the rack and stack, maybe they're gonna come and they're gonna put the serial number or something because they do the in hardware inventory, that's why. So you have to inform your data center facility team and also you have to inform your, um, maybe what is called the inventory team. So there's two keywords at least you, do, you need to tell them. So before before you configure the server, before you rack and stack, there is some procedure you have to maintain. You have to inform your data center facility team. You have to inform your, um, the inventory team, physical server inventory team. Yeah, I'm, the, hey, I'm going to add a new server to the environment. Um, this is my server information. So this is the server, you just rack and stack, right? And then what's your duty? You, you have to make sure it has two power cable, it's connected with two power outlet, right? Left and right on the rack. And also, and then network connections. How many network connections you need? Do you think your facility knows? So it, 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 it will be your plan, actually how many connections you need. So for standard configuration, I'm just telling you guys for standard configuration, please uh, just remember for standard configuration and maintain in your environment. If you remember doesn't have this, just recommend to have this. 
that will help your environment a lot at least minimum okay think about this is your your name so make sure when you buy a server make sure you have at least four 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 port four port or four ten gig nowadays one gig is not enough nowadays for with the server it's gonna come up with two or four one gig connections with the server it's gonna come up with but the server you guys already bought it has two 10 gig two one gig connections of course it's a in build already in build but it's not mean that all the server has the same configuration right so most of the case I found like the server come up with four one gig and I added extra network. But when you bought the server, make sure you are with 10 gig also. So this 10 gig maybe you, you maybe it's gonna come maybe maybe by default is coming with four one gig. So if it is in build, you cannot change it. So anyway, you don't need actually four, two is enough for you. So for you, what is enough? Two connections is enough here. And four connection needs, must be need 10 gig. If it is one gig, still you can work, but the performance will be slow. The performance will be slow. But I'm saying like, what should be your recommendation? Maybe on the interview time, they will ask you, okay, so whenever you uh, buy a server, what, uh, like, what kind of configuration you consider? You can say, yeah, I can, I highly recommend if it is used for VM or ESXi host, I highly recommend to have at least um, four 10 gig and two one gig connections. And then if they ask why, because I gonna, then your, your answer will be, I gonna make two one gig connections for management, make it Nick teaming. So Nick teaming, team means team, make a team, right? So Nick teaming means if you make a like relationship with two port together in a bundle, that's called a nick teaming. So, so your answer should be, I'll do the nick teaming for management. That means I'm gonna add two port together, nick teaming. That will be your answer, nick teaming, okay? So I'm gonna make a nick teaming for management, ESXI management, that means if one nick card goes bad or one port goes bad, another gonna be one. And that's how I can provide redundancy. That will be your answer for the interview. That's why I highly recommend to have at least minimum two one gig because for management one gig is enough. And then another four gig, uh, 10 gig, four connections, right? 10 gig, four connections, right? And also, and also there will be a management, physical server management. This one is your host management. Host means we're gonna install ESXi, right? VMR, VMR uh, operating system. So for VMware operating system management, we're gonna use two NIC cards. And later on for data, like data flow, because why we are building the server? Because we're, not, we're gonna have more transactions, right? We're gonna have more data flow, right? So for passing the data from your server to the other server or maybe other application, so you need 10 key connections. So all those will be used for data. So We'll understand, but at least I'm saying hardware level, what is the minimum configuration you need? So each server, you should have at least total seven, minimum, minimum question. If you have a maximum more, that's fine. You can have more relax, more flexibility, right? But at least to have a minimum standard, seven connections total. So definitely you will have one or two, one gig. It definitely you wanna have it. And also definitely you wanna have it a remote management for each server. Now, now, Dell Remote Management, for IDRAC. What it is called? Dell Remote Management called IDRAC. And HP, HP management, 
I low. So these two things you have to remember and Cisco. Cisco UCS. Sometimes I think chassis. Yes, I yes or CIS, yes, I don't know. Chassis management. And also the chassis management, maybe. And also they have a they call it I uh, IPMI. IPMI. So yeah, Dell EMC, actually Dell means Dell EMC. The remote management called IDREC. So all the time they have they're gonna have a port and it's gonna be written very small, like you, you're gonna see on the back side, it's written there, IDREC. So if you look at on the server like this, you're gonna see it. Let's open all. I think it's one is already open. So if you look at here, in here, in here, this port. This port all the time is gonna be separate. You see this server has a four port here, four, but on the left side, it has a port, separate port. And also there's a white text. I don't know, you guys are able to see it or not. Yeah, this one, I'm talking about this one. You see here, I, here is written IDREC. So this is a management. So HP has same thing. HP call is ILO. It's a separate port for management. Which management? So now you guys gonna be confused with management. The reason is whenever we install the VMware software, we're gonna call it VMware management, like ESXA management. So, and also we said server management, then two management is there. So you guys will be confused. That's why I'm going to make it clear. ESXA management is like a operating system level management. And server management means it's a physical layer management, physical layer like physical machine, machine management. So whenever you have these connections and the machine is far off, for example, your laptop is far off at your home and you are here and I'm saying, okay, can you power on your machine? Do you think you can power on your machine? So that means you have to, maybe you have to call your wife or maybe your kids, can you turn on my laptop? Can you power on my laptop, right? So for the server, if the server is in your data center, you are at your office, the server is powered off. So how are you gonna power on the machine? Do you think you can power on? You have to go to the data center, right? You have to go to the data center. Think about now you are in um, somewhere, like you're in a vacation somewhere, but in emergency, your boss call you, the server is powered off. Can you power, turn on the server? Can you power on the server? How are you gonna do that? You have to go to the data center. There's no alternative, right? There's no alternative. But there is alternative if you have a remote management configuration. So if the server is powered off, still you can power on remotely. So if you can power on the server remotely, that means you can do everything remotely. The critical thing is power on the machine. If machine is running, then you can do a lot of other stuff, right? But the machine is turned off, you cannot do anything. Right. So if you can do remotely power on, that means you can do everything remotely. So that means this is very, very important. ILO or IDREC or IPMI. So if it is third party, Cisco or maybe some other third party company, vendor, we call it vendor or third party hardware. Maximum company use Dell or HP or maybe Cisco, right? So three types of remote management. And I'm highly recommending all of you to remember is IDREC, ILO, and IPMI. So what you can do before you install anything on the server, what else you need to do? So you see here, you have two power. You see here, two power. So you have to connect two power. And then in this server, it has um, two one gig and it has two 10 gig. So we have to have it. You see it, it doesn't have adapter. You cannot connect the cable, right? So you have to purchase separate 
you guys remember sfp adapter i told i told you guys sfp adapter for this for this server if you server is like that you have to buy um, you have to buy sfp adapter sfp uh, sfp copper transceiver so you have to buy this you have to buy this this type of but it, it is a 10 gig or it's 10 10 gig base t sfp but this one is this one is actually used one that's why its price is 35 dollar so you guys can like buy it to if you if your server is like this if your server is like this for 10 gig connections you can have it like this so you have to buy the sfp connector then you can insert the ethernet cable otherwise you cannot and whoever is thinking oh it's too much stuff right don't worry about it maybe you never need to do it but if you work as an engineer maybe you need to do it but if you work as a administrator maybe you don't need to do it system already built you just need to work with the server you already submitted the requirement to the facility team right and also your network team so you have to inform your facility team your network team right and also your inventory team what do you need to inform your network team you need to inform your network team hey i need seven ethernet cable and out of seven three of them out of seven maybe two connection you need one one gig right and also for idrc management you need another one gig connection this is all the time one gig one gig is enough because idrc is not used that much just when you need it you just log in there that's it right it's not used that much so idrac and for maybe your other management you're going to use two right so total three connections that means if you have three port one gig that means you need three can three cable right one gig cable right so you have to mention, you have to send the requirement to your network team. Hey, I need total seven cable, seven, seven Ethernet cable, and one. So this is the way you can write it down. I'm going to show you actually what should be the format to write it down. So you can say one X, one GB for IDRAC management. And then you're going to say uh, 2x 1GB for ESXi. You don't know, you, you don't know right now what is the ESXi is, but within short time or maybe next class, you're going to understand actually what is ESXi. But for now, just think about this is a word, ESXi. It's a host man, operating system, ESXi management and then you're going to say uh, 4x 10 gb for data that's it so how many connections how many connections in here you're going to say seven drops they call it drops this is the like uh, what is called the technical language Drops. Drops means Ethernet connection. Cable. Seven drops. Total seven drops. And you're explaining what drops is for what. Drops means your Ethernet cable, your Ethernet connection. So you're going to send it to your network team. And also, because network team will provide you the network cable. This network information, you're going to send it to your network team, right? Whenever your network team said, okay, you they, they will open a case. Or maybe you have to open a case for them. Like, you yeah. There will be a um, system called um, service now ticketing system, or maybe um, what other else? Uh, footprints. Um, most of the company use service now as a ticketing tools. So that ticketing tools means is communication with your entire organization. So if you need something, you're gonna send request through the ticketing system. It's gonna open a ticket for you, and then the other team will work for you based on your ticket. You're gonna mention everything, whatever you are looking for. So same thing. 
how are you going to submit the requirement to the ticketing system? What the ticketing system? So maybe you can say, okay, it's a service now ticket. So you say, I open service now ticket and I submit the network drops request to the network team. That's it. So whenever the the, uh, the, the network team, they give you, so they will have two switch. They'll, they will have also switch, switch A and switch B. So when you request cable, you, they're gonna ask you, do, are you making any kind of Nick teaming, and they said yes. So they're gonna send you cable, okay. They give you one cable from here. They give you one cable. So for example, you're doing a Nick teaming here, right? You're gonna do Nick teaming here, right? One cable here and another cable. When you inform them, I'm gonna do Nick teaming. So they're gonna give you another second cable, they're gonna give you from here. They're gonna give you from here. So you're gonna connect, you just need to connect it, that's it. So on in here, they're gonna write it down. This one coming from switch B, this one coming from switch A. Who gonna write it down? Your network team. On the cable, they're gonna put a label on it. They're gonna put the label. This one is coming from switch A, this one coming from switch B. It's not gonna be like easy word switch A or switch B, it's gonna be say, X, Y, Z model, the Swiss model number and the floor number, rack number, a lot of, this is a big number or big name, but in the end, you're gonna say port number this, port number this, and switch number this. So you're gonna maintain redundancy on your side, network team gonna maintain redundancy from their side. So they have a two switch with the cluster. So if this switch goes down, automatically with other one is the one. So that's why they have a, every time for same connections, they have switch A, switch B, switch A, switch B. So, and, and also they will read, they will write down on the label, end of the cable, you're gonna see here at the label. So th that's how you can connect. Same thing in here, four connections, one connection will go from here and, and the second connection will go here. This connection will go here, this connection will go here. And also based on your subnet, the one they will provide, Maybe they give you 30 subnet, but your network team, they don't know actually which subnet you are going to use for this. So you have to mention, okay, for this server, I'm going to use this subnet. And based on that, they're gonna configure inside the switch. What kind of configuration is network team task? They will know. But from your side, you just need to inform them, okay, this is the seven drops I need. This is the seven drops. That drops is what? Ethernet, right? So that's it. So you, you task, your job is to connect. Whenever they said, okay, we are done, then you just need to connect, right? Connected, one of your all cable connection is done. Now it's time to start, right? Start means what? Power on. But when you power on, if you turn on, like turn on your, uh, power on your laptop button, what do you see? On, on the screen, you are able to see something, right? First, very quickly it's gonna come uh, like black screen and white some text and then it's come up your operating system and you, you are able to log in there, right? Yeah. So that means what? Your, Laptop has a motherboard, hardware system, plus monitor together, right? But server doesn't have a monitor. How are you gonna see it, right? Is it a question, right? Your server is a physical device. It doesn't have any monitor. How are you gonna see? So how your server, okay. So you see here, here is a port. You see here, this one has a, you see? This one doesn't have a, Two, two port here, right? This one has a uh, pin, that one doesn't have a pin, right? Like this port. So you have to have a cable like this, like both your cable should be, server doesn't have HDMI. It has all the time the serial port. So you have to have a serial cable. And plus you see here, here is the USB. So you need a, you need a also um, keyboard and mouse, right? So you can attach USB keyboard and USB mouse here, or maybe if you have a wireless, then just put one, that's fine. You can, with one Bluetooth, right? The, the way wireless mouse and keyboard work, right? So if, if you have wireless mouse and keyboard, then you can put it here and then you can use your mouse and keyboard. So you need monitor, mouse and keyboard, right? Otherwise you cannot see anything. You need to see the activities, how you're gonna configure. 
you know, you're not you're gonna do a lot of stuff inside the server, but you don't wanna do everything in the like in front of the server. First, you need to connect all the required cables, internet cables, power cables, right? Everything is done. Then your first job, your first job is to configure the remote management. So what is your first job? To configure the remote management. After you're done with the remote management, that means what? Configure means what? You're going to provide an IP address. So whenever you are able to provide an IP address, now you can use that IP address and use that just simple browser. Any laptop from anywhere, just open the browser, type the IP address, then you're going to connect with the server. And you can get inside of the server, and then you can do whatever you want. So the first thing is you need to configure the remote management. And now it depends what kind of remote management. It depends on the server. If it is Dell, then iDrag. If it is HP, then it's ILO. And if it is other third party or Cisco users, it's IPMI. So now you hook up the monitor and you turn on. Now you're able to see something on the screen, right? Physically, you're able to see something. And then what next? You are not able to do anything because you don't have mouse and keyboard. Without mouse and keyboard, how are you going to do that? If you need to type something, how are you going to type it? Maybe mouse you don't need because it's a black screen, but at least you need a keyboard. So without keyboard, how are you going to work? You cannot type anything, right? So you have to have a keyboard also, right? <clears throat> so now think about, I'm, I'm just giving you a solution, keyboard, attach a keyboard and mouse or attach a monitor and put it on top of your server. That's a personal solution, right? If you purchase a server for your home lab, that will solve your problem, right? But think about in data center in one rack, it has the maybe 10 server, right? You don't have enough space to put the server on top of the uh, monitor to put on top of the server, right? You don't have option, right? You got monitor take a, uh, like at least 10 U space. So you cannot waste 10 U space on the rack, right? You cannot put, and also, this is not feasible. In one data center, maybe you can have 10 racks. Each rack has a 10 server. Think about, think about, you have, you are working for infrastructure team, right? Your infrastructure, infrastructure team has 10 racks, and each rack has 10 servers. That means how many servers you have? 100 servers. So do you think for all 100 servers, when you configure it, do you think it's possible to hook up monitor and keyboard for this one, then you done and then unplug it and plug back into other server and then unplug it and plug into the other server. It's not possible, right? So that's why inside the data, data center, they have a separate monitor and keyboard like travel system. So you can travel it to other system for configuration. Not only that, so this is for one-time configuration, but do you think, do you think like after you configure the remote management and it's not gonna make any problem in your entire life? It's gonna make some problem sometimes. So then how are you gonna check it? Again, you're gonna connect the monitor? No, remotely you can do that, but somehow your remote is not working, somehow. Then you have to come back in data center, right? So again, you have to hook up the monitor, right? Right? That's a... Uh, Actually, data center has that arrangement. They have a like um, like this, like this, the table, right? You can move, you can move. A, they have a stand with wheel, and that stand has a monitor mount, and also all the cable record cable is there. So you can just move from any rack or any data center space. You can move it. Or each and every data center have those arrangement. So that's the one way. It's manual way, right? But I said system admin life is always think about redundancy. So you have a remote management, right? Whenever you configure this one, hook up physical monitor and you will be able to configure it. And when you are done with the remote management, that means without monitor remotely from your laptop, you can see whatever you are able to see when you physically attach a monitor with the server, same stuff you're going to see when you have remote access, right? To the IP address, whenever you log into the server, then reboot the server, power on the server or power off the server, everything, all the activities you're gonna see from your yeah. laptop. 
or desktop. Same, same screen, you wanna see. So, but that's a manual effort, right? To attach a monitor, it's a manual effort. But first time, maybe you have to do it, or maybe personally, when, when you wanna do it, you're gonna do it, right? But there is a system, there is a system called KBM, KBM switch. And uh, let's show you the KBM switch. Okay, so this is the one look like, this is the monitor system. And it's gonna be kind of like this. So it's usually like in the data center, they have 48, this kind of serial port. So each and every server gonna be connect instead of this one, this port. Instead of connecting this one to uh, uh, individual monitor is connected with the KBM switch, with the wire, what? The KBM switch. And KBM switch is different cable with serial cable plus USB, both together in a bundle. So you just need to connect with the switch and on top of the switch somewhere, just only one monitor. The monitor is look like this, this. This is the KBM monitor. So it, it will have an option. Say for example, you have, 40, 48 port, right? So one KBM will be able to serve 48 server. And then you can have another KBM for serving another 48. If you have a more than 100 or 100, then you need at least minimum two KBM, right? So your KBM has a monitor. So which server you log in, you just need to press and then it will show you, okay, I have 48 server connected, which one you want? So on the screen, you can say, okay, I need uh, monitor, I need server number 37 or server number 32, whatever the server you are now configuring, right? So just kind of uh, click it, then it's gonna give you that server uh, monitor. So that KBM also has an IP address. That KBM also has an IP address. So now again, you will have a two redundancy. Two redundancy means your server is connected, your server is connected with, say for example, you have a KBM switch here. Think about your server has a KVM switch here, right? It's a KVM switch, right? KVM. Is KVM switch, right? So your server is connected with the single port, like exactly this one, exactly uh, this one. So this, this, this one cable is connected here, server, and another part of the serial cable or BGA cable, whatever you call, is going to connect with you switch port here, right? Like this in here. Say for example, like, like from somewhere, say for here, here to here, right? Like this connected here. And then, so the KB will have multiple like port, right? A48 minimum. So minimum 48 server you can connect with one, one KBM. And that KBM also has an IP address. That means the KBM also connected with switch A, and also KBM is connected with switch B, redundancy connection, right? So, and also the switch has a IP address. So now you, your server is connected with this monitor, plus with the remote management, you can get another monitor, right? Monitor means like in your laptop, when you type the remote management IP address, you're gonna see, right? The same screen on your monitor, right? So remote management will provide you the monitor, which is we can call virtual monitor. Right, and also your may, your server is physically connected with the KVM, and KVM has an IP address. And if you type same IP address, KVM IP address, that means you're gonna get the KVM monitor. So in your laptop, you will have two interface for one server. So directly you can log in this machine with the remote management IP, and also this server you can access through the KVM if you type the KVM IP. Do you understand? So now for remote management, you have two redundancy. So you can open multiple tab, right? On your browser, I, this is a Google Chrome browser, right? You can just, in here, you wanna open iDRAC, you can say 10.15.0.8. This is one, you see, I already got it. This is one iDRAC. This is one iDRAC interface. And then your KBM, so KBM will have maybe different IP address, you can say 10.15. Something does something, right? And then he'd enter, right? 
and then you're going to get KV interface. So this is directly IDRAC interface. That means you in directly log into server number. Say, for example, this is the server number 37. So you are logging to the server number 37. But whenever you are logging to the KVM, then KVM will have all 48 server lists. And then from there, if you need 37 login, click 37. So that means what? Remotely, you are able to manage your server through two ways. One is directly IDRAC or ILO or IPMI. And another way is through the KVM. Also, you can go physically. When you go to the physically, then you have to open uh, this one. This one. It's going to be shut. It, it's going to be closed down. You see here? This, this one. This one will be closed down. This is a lid. So lid should be closed down. So when you need to check physically, you can just open it. That's it. So this is how you're going to connect. So I believe you understand both uh, remote management system, right? So now I'm going to stop it and I'm going to show you the our, our physical server here. So I have 4 port. It not means that you will you have the same 4, four port, right? Here is 4. Yeah. So this is for data, the one I said. Think about this is 10 gig. It's not actually 10 gig. In here it's a 1 gig. But think about this is 10 gig for data. And and also you can have two more for, uh, but I don't have it on this server. Maybe you, you also don't have it on the server. But in your enterprise level, you should have another two for management. So this is how you're going to connect. This is the power cable. I have only one power cable. And this is here. This is empty. I should I should have a power supply here, but I don't have it. I have only one power supply. You see here? So this is called power supply, and this is a power cable. This is power supply, and this is a power cable. And also see 750 watt, 750 watt. And some server has 1,000 watt. Some server has less than 750 watt. It depends. So it's a power supply. Sometimes power supply, if power supply goes bad, it's pretty simple. You just need to turn it. Just if you pull it, it's going to be come out. The power supply is pretty easy. If power supply goes bad, you can just pull it and then replace it. That's it. So the main connection, I, I connected on the LAN number one. So this is the other part. Because I'm showing here because this is our home lab. But in your enterprise level environment, you don't need to think about this side because the network team, they know where they need them to connect. Hard drive. You see here? This all hard drive. And if you take it out here, you see here? There is a serial number. This is the serial, server serial number. This is the server serial number. You have to open a ticket, right? So you have to mention, OK, I have a hard drive bed on this serial number. Then they will send you the hard drive. And it's pretty easy to change the hard drive. If your hard drive is bad, if your hard drive is bad, it's pretty easy to change. You just need to push it like this. And you see, it's just come out. This is the hard drive. So you just need to push it like this inside and then just clip it. That's it. If you see, this is the pin. That means it's a male connector. So, and also the female one is on the server. And so your cable, make sure you have this kind of cable, okay? Is it available? Okay. Are you yes. guys able to see it? 